Senior Stay or Go TV live today. I have three wonderful guests with me. I have Bill Kelly, who's a former board member of the San Diego Human Dignity Foundation and the San Diego um, Senior Advisory Board. I have LaRue Fields, who is the Senior Program Coordinator and the Services Navigator for the San Diego LGBT Community Center. Mm -hmm. And I also have Elena Kalinowski, who's the Community Partnership Manager at 211 San Diego. So welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank Our conversation is going to be about senior housing as it relates to the LGBT community here in San Diego County. The aging crisis is a case of human and financial resources not really keeping pace with the aging population needs. And so, Bill, I'll let you get started. Oh, very good. I just I made some notes because I am a senior, you know, and I, I tend not to remember <laughs> everything I'd like to say. So I just want to make a few comments in the short time we have. <coughs> Using the numbers provided from the UCLA uh, Center for Health Policy and Research, uh, using the California Elder Index, uh, which is online if anybody wants to look at it. The fastest growing age group is now currently 80 and above. The fastest growing age group. Awesome. In 14 years, the number over 50 will increase by 70%. Wow. One out of five will be over 65. I'm getting there. <laughs> Half of all retired Californians 65 or older can't make ends meet. They can't meet the basic necessities. And 80% of care for older people is provided by family members. And that's an important thing to remember as we talk about this. Uh, the government and private sector research has warned us for years, I've been doing this for probably 10 years of following the various researches and studies that have been done. So it's not like we're not aware of it. It's sort of like the dam in Oroville. They were aware of that a while ago and decided it wasn't worth, well, we know what's happening there. But anyway, the, the, uh, it's going to impact all ages and all segments of our society, including housing, health care, uh, the, the economy and labor pool, as well as family life and politics. Uh, each one of those could be a show in and of itself. <coughs> Physio and physical and social economic variables are, play into this, um, being like community and family support, as well as uh, health and physical and mental health. Uh, assets that are available and resources in the financial area, education, geographic location, transportation. The one thing I want everybody to remember is that the socioeconomic variables that are at play are at play for everyone, but they aren't a priority for everyone. Some people have good transportation or they have good assets or they have good health, but some people don't have any of it. So the solutions that we have to come up with in providing, in this case, for affordable housing for everybody, and in this case, I think we're going to be talking mainly about the LGBT senior housing. <coughs> but uh, coming up with that is going to take many, many different solutions. There's no, there's no one way because there's too many different variables involved. So with that, I'd, I'd like to turn it over to LaRue. LaRue, I know the center, mm -hmm. their mission is to enhance and sustain the health and well-being of the LGBT community in San Diego. Exactly. So Sandy. from that mission, how are they assisti assisting the seniors with their housing needs here in San Diego? Well, what's happening is something great is happening. And the, uh, with Community Housing Works, a local developer and the center have collaborated on building an LGBT affirming senior housing. And this facility will be located on the corner of North, I mean, Texas and Howard in North Park. And so we're excited in the community. Oh, the seniors are so excited. You just don't know because they've been waiting all their lives to be in a community with each other, you know, with other people that are like them, that they don't have all this animosity because of the preferences that they've selected. And so they have been waiting, and so they're anxious and they're excited, but they're honored that we as a community felt enough of, that they were important enough that we would help provide this facility. So we're looking at the um, completion date for December 2017. So oh, this, this year. year, yes. Yeah. But the interesting <clears throat> thing is to get interest in it to get on board or to get your application in there's nothing available now you have to go online may 1st okay. and that's what happens and so if you want to get your name on the list or you want to pre-register may 1st is the time nine o'clock if you would like to know where you can call me or you can 
visit my website, but most people that are calling may not have a website. So 619-692-2077, extension 205. And I will f get you information. I will help you pre-register if you need to, because we know some of our seniors don't have computers because mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. pre-application is only online. It's not a paper situation. So, so they'll call you and you'll assist them while you're inputting But it. this is what I'm going to do, Patty. I'm going to have them from May 1st to the 7th is when the application process is open because it's a lottery, because they feel they're going to have a lot of people. So from May 1st through the 7th, the center will be open. We will close our cyber center for normal folks and be open for the seniors that want to register. I will have people that call me understand they must come down. Okay. I'm not gonna handle any calls. They must come down, they must actually help me, tell me the information or whoever we have assigned. We'll have co I'll have coworkers and volunteers and they will push the button that says submit. And we will make a copy of the information that says you have submitted your document. So when they leave there, they have something that verifies that they have submitted a document, they have pushed the button, they can't say, oh, I did this, and the center didn't do this, and <laughs> they, have, they were in, totally involved with the process. And so now, how many apartments are going to be available? 76. 76 apartments, and 76. you'll probably get 7,600, maybe yeah. 1,000 <laughs> applications. So, <laughs> yeah, but it will be a lottery, and um, like I said, May 1st to the 7th, they'll keep the, you know, the application process open, but when they get to the first 500, it'll close. Okay. And then they'll take out of that 500, they'll spin all the names <laughs> in a computer, of course, and then they would select 125 people. And they would start with that 125 to start with enrolling and getting them ready to So enroll. if I'm a senior and I don't have a computer and I come down to the center and I push my submit button yes. and I take my paperwork back with me, Right. Will you call me if I become one of that 125 since I don't have a computer? Yes, the um, community housing works or the management company will call okay. you. At that stage, the center is out of it. Okay. And what the other process the center will be doing is we will be doing the social service component because this is a facility that will have some homeless, eight homeless apartments. Okay. They're going to need some case management. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the other seniors, they're going to need case management. They're going to need help with navigating some of the social services in our community. So we will be providing that service. We also want folks to know that in that we can't discriminate for anyone coming in, fine. Anyone is welcome. So it's not just focused on just LGBT people, so that's the only thing that will be there. It's just that we, the center, will be so doing the social service and will be a LGP, LGBTQ affirming facility. Got it. Got yeah. it. That's awesome. That is awesome. If, if I may add, it's the first of its kind in San Diego that I know yes. of. <clears throat> Are there others across the country that you modeled this after? Yes. We particularly went to New York. I mean, to L.A. New York is building one. I think Chicago has one. So. There are several, but they're large cities. And so we're in the next wave, and we're really excited. You know, we're America's really excited. Finest city. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, and we're looking for this opportunity, and we want the 700, to be honest with you. We want the 500. We want them to show, we want to show that it's a need. Yeah. for this housing. You know, if we only had 200 people, that doesn't relate. You know, that doesn't show very well. So once you get the residents moved in, you're still going to offer your services, but exactly. who's going to actually manage the project? It's a company called Con Am. Okay, so you already have a property manager exactly. who's going to take care of all that. Exactly. And, and then from a resource perspective, in order to build this building, was it private fund? Was it public funds? Private funds. Private funds. Yeah. So Loans from here, stuff. do you plan on going out and trying to garnish even more funds to create maybe another apartment building someplace in the county? Or 
Well, like I said, we it's a big working, project, I know. Right, but we're working with community housing works, but we're probably going to see how this one goes for a while and see the need and see who we miss mm -hmm. because we're going to miss some people, mm -hmm. how many we miss because it's a lottery. So, you know, and so the fear for the LGBT seniors, some of them, is they won't get in. And it, they've been waiting so long, so. So you're gonna have a line out the door on May 1st. We probably yeah. will. <laughs> we probably will, but we're hoping, I've seen the application, I don't think it's gonna take that long. And so we'll have them, but we'll be ready. You know, we'll be ready, we understand the fear, we understand the need, and so we're gonna be there for them. That's awesome, so. that's awesome. Yes. Am I correct, Lou, in, in understanding that that interest, that uh, initial application is really an interest list? and then an app, a formal application comes later? No, it's a pre-application. Okay. Yeah, it has name and different, you know, um, how much financial information and some other stuff, but okay. it's a pre-application, but it's just basically to get your name in the hat. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't ask for anything too, too private, you know, or anything like that. Just to get your name in the hat, just to show an interest, you know, awesome. basically. And Elena, I know, a lot of people probably don't even know who or what 211 yeah. is, but here in San Diego, you have 6,000 community connections. Mm. Well, that's the resources that we have in our database. That's so a we, lot. We'd actually speak to many more people throughout the year. We get about 1,200 calls a day wow. of people wow. from all over the county. Um, and 211, we are a we are a nonprofit, but we are a public utility, so we are a free number for anyone to call. And really, 24 hours a 24 day. 24 hours a day, yeah. And you always talk to a human person, which <laughs> I think matters for a lot of people, especially in really vulnerable spaces. Um, and, you know, we are really there to, to help people know, first of all, what is even out there that is available to them. And that includes housing resources as well as all the other resources we need to live, right? So that might be food, that might be transportation, that might be support, education, a whole host of things that make our lives both from a surviving standpoint as well as thriving and enriched. Um, and so 211, we are there to really s let someone know what's out there, but really help them identify of all of these resources, what is available to me as an individual? What am I eligible for, for accessing? And, and really, how do I do that? Um, and so about 20% of the people who call us are older adults. So we, we work very closely with a number of agencies. We work at the center. I mean, for a lot of supportive services through all stages of life. Mm -hmm. um, and we really want to make sure people are accessing the supportive services that are available to them. Because what a shame to be going through um, you know, a crisis or just a vulnerable time in your life and not, not know, know what's available to you. Right. And there are these amazing right. resources that we, our, our mission is to get people connected to them. Well, and like LaRue said, so many seniors don't have a computer, so it's not like yes. they can just Google it. Yeah. <laughs> and yet they're in need, and where do they call? They yeah. can't, you know, there's really not a phone book you can go to anymore <laughs> to say, right. okay, where do I call? Exactly. So to have a resource like 211, which is a one stop shop where you can call, and yeah. I know you guys do a lot for the veterans, and yes. that my dad was a World War II veteran. And yes, so we have um, a partnership with Mental Health Systems and Veterans Vill Village of San Diego um, called Courage to Call. It's also 24-hour line. It is staffed by veterans. It is specifically for active duty military veterans and their family members to call, be help with navigation through all of the different services available to them, um, and well, especially and for older adults who are veterans who are, you know, maybe accessing services for the first time. Well, and don't even understand because I applied exactly. for aid and attendance yeah. for my dad and my mom as a surviving spouse. Talk yeah. about a nightmare. I had to get the governor of New Mexico <laughs> yes. involved. <laughs> so, um, that is, and that's not even that. To uh, have uh, assistance <laughs> is huge because yeah. you make one little period in the wrong spot yes, and they it reject starts you. over yep so um so i think that's huge from a senior perspective yes. as well to be able to have that available because like you know so many people there's so many resources out there but nobody knows where to look and so yes. they'll get frustrated yeah. and then they'll just give up yeah and what a shame because they're the, we are a resource rich community which is fantastic but it's only as great as you're able to access them exactly um and so one of the other really you know kind of key programs we have um, for, especially for older adults, is a health navigation line that specifically helps, um, well, all individuals, but a lot of times older adults navigate all of the different 
um, health supportive services. And that's not just like your primary care, that's also can you get to your doctor's appointment? Do you have respite care so that you can go see your doctor and mm -hmm. the person you're caring for is taken care, care of? So all of the other, you know, really the social determinants of health that looks at how do we support what's going on? And of course, housing. You know, housing is a, is right. a huge yeah. issue in San Diego yeah. County. Um, just from a, you know, kind of a vacancy standpoint, we have um, very limited housing and so we, we really want people to know what is available to them and kind of demystify some of it. That's awesome. Well, thank you all so much for being here today. This has been so much fun and there's so much out there and I hope the message gets across so that everybody knows call 211, call the center, do whatever you need to do to get your loved one what they need. Thanks so much for joining us today for Senior Stay or Go TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard way, it's hard. That was the hardest part of the show. <laughs>